Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Super Metroid redesigned in the amazing Sun Falls of Doom. Um I still am not exactly pleased with that tube not cooperating, but I guess there's really nothing I can do right now. I don't know what triggers that or whatever. I just I don't know. So we are going to take care of other stuff first. Get some more Torizo bean combo stuff taken care of and all that fun stuff. And then we'll head down into Norfair. Now at this point there really isn't too much left in the hack. No. Norfair is big. And a chunk of that is Lower Norfair, but Lower Norfair is actually not that bad. No, oh, let me get this now. It's an interesting little room. I don't think I got this in any of my other times I played this hack. That's actually really sad. But yeah, Lower Norfair in this hack is not that big a deal. It's, I mean, yeah, it'll hurt, but I don't think it's as hard to, it's hard to navigate. And especially since a lot of the paths will just loop you back to where you've been already. So, yeah. I guess if you're unfamiliar with it, it might take a little bit, but you know, I didn't have that much of an issue with it, I guess. But I guess it could. there could be some problem, maybe. But now let's... Hello, Yachtroids. There's something here. Yes, there is. I like how the Mocktroids are supposed to be... Hello. This should have been the Super Missile Room. That other one I got the Super should have been a Missile Room. I'm just saying that would make more sense to me. But, anyway, not my other thought. I like how the mock droids are supposed to be the pirate space attempt. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> pirate space attempt. <laughs> There's some. Some. <laughs> Boy, I can't believe I said that. The space pirates attempt. At making Metroids. <laughs> they're more like a failed attempt. I mean, obviously they're not that good at being Metroids. They're very bad at being Metroids, actually. And that's in Super, which is the second, well, I guess if you count on the term, the third to last game in the series timeline. The second game in the timeline is Prime. And the Space Pirates do a fairly good job messing with a bunch of crazy stuff with a unknown mutagen called Bazon. And while a lot of their experiments, yes, they fail and all, they seem to have much better success in that. I.e. the Omega Pirate. They seem to have much better success with that than they do with the mock toys and super which is much later when they had more time and more stuff and all that fun see look at this this tube will break what is up with that other tube maybe I should take a space attempt at it I can open this up now though no, that door is open. Or the gate. <laughs> I still can't believe that. I take a space attempt at something. That's the only kind of attempt to take is on the space attempt. I can do it. There's always no try. There's no do it or not. Well, there's also a space attempt. <laughs> oh boy. Well, that's certain. 
Well, that's something to remember this whole thing by. Oh, goodness. There's... There's stuff. Oh, my goodness. That is what screw attack can do sometimes. Just because the faster horizontal movement, you can kind of wrap yourself around ledges and stuff. Platforms, I guess I should say, not ledges. Yeah, what is the deal with the other tube? It's a stupid tube. It's hiding something I need. And... Yeah, that's it. I always find it interesting sometimes watching people play and that after getting some items like I'm going to mention screw attack right now but, but there's others such as grapple beam and such and I forgot to open that gate I think we should go do that oh good grief But after getting some items, it's interesting to see people like find ways to com avoid using them in some way. It's like I catch myself doing it sometimes too. With like I would have screw attack, grapple beam, or something like that. I will still be using less efficient, weaker stuff on enemies, such as beams on enemies when screw attack would take care of them just by jumping into them. It's, I just... It's kind of strange when I catch myself doing it because when I see other people doing it, I'm like, why are you doing this? That's like not very smart. You've got something to do this much better already. And you're just making life harder on yourself. So I don't know, that's kind of weird. It's like there's something that says, oh wait, no, no, don't do that. That seems like a bad idea. Okay, and here, that's the beam combo. But we have to go through this wonderful, not arbitrary at all, mess of bomb box. It's like, seriously, did you have to do all this? And here is the switch. Now the gate is open and we can go grab that. Which will finally let us put our beams together and take over the universe. So, at least this wasn't... This isn't that far away, so... And that didn't require a space attempt. So yeah, sometimes I just don't understand why other people do it, why I do it sometimes. It's like we completely forget we have the most powerful item in the game. And we just decide, oh, well, nope, don't want to use it. Although in the original Metroid, I mean, obviously the missiles are generally the best way to go about defeating the bosses. I almost never use missiles on them, just because I find it funner to... That... was well, not good. Get up there. Out of the sand. Oh, good grief. Good lord, Samus, get out. Oh, fine. Fine, take a sand bath. Yeah, sand ball, sand grabby pit things. Redesign physics. Fun. How this is how to make sand more annoying 101. 
Like regular sand can give you enough trouble, but. And then, hey, look what you've got to go through. You've got to go through more sand. And because the space jump things, you can't get through this very easy. You have to get out of sand. Oh, come on. I want you to jump up and out of the sand to the right. Not quite like that. I want you to make it up to the ledge, Samus. Sand spring ball, of course. Whoa, Samus, what in the world are you doing? There we go. Okay, so one's down. And we just have more to go. Get rid of those annoying guys. Samus. Get up. There we go. And here is our beam combo upgrade. Now we can stack our beams. No matter what they are, it's whatever we want. Except for plasma and spacer, obviously. So we'll just throw a wave on for now. And now that blue room with the dot is the other Chozo statue. The third being behind that tube, obviously, but I can't seem to do anything with that tube, so... Yeah, that tube is being annoying. We just run through... okay. Now I just have to remember how to get to that room. That room is why we opened the gate from that one door. Maybe it's full of these things. It's like, oh, open this gate here so you can go back around, go through it. Oh, you need to have defeated this boss, by the way. Oh, here's four gates that's guarding the Chozo statue. You have no clue even exists because it's just up on a ceiling with no real hint to its location at all. Other than there were four gates you had to find the secret switches to in the first place. Okay, you see, just like that, I just used my beam on the crab. There was really no point in that situation. And I'll probably be doing that all the time. It's, I think it's more probably just a habit. You know, by the time you get screw tech in the games or in most hacks, it's like at that point, you've been having to destroy all the enemies with your beams, with bombs, whatever. So you're just kind of used to it. Then it's like, oh hey, I do have screw tag. I can just, yeah, get through these. And then of course this is the ice thing where it presented me. Oh hey, screw tag, I'm not gonna work on that, it's frozen. Which still makes no sense whatsoever. But whatever. That's how it's programmed. Alright, let's get this little statue guy. Then we'll worry about the other whatchamacallit compatriot whatever comrade that that works. We'll worry about the other comrade later. So yeah, we open the gate up to get through this door, which will let us get this last statue. Good grief, it still takes a lot of hits. Here's our last statue, but... Just like everything in Radio, there's a switch to get to it. This switch, however, is in the same room, which is... quite nice. It's an unusual break from the normal routine of redesign. And it did not require any space attempts. Here we get in there. There we go. So we've got two of them down. We know where the third is. The tube is being a jerk, so we can't get it right now. If someone knows what triggers being able to open that tube or whatever, I would like to know, because that is actually annoying me. 
I've... I don't know why that tube is not being opened. And I just closed that. It doesn't need open, but... Oh well. I guess you could just come around the top and open it that way. Okay, and actually I'm also... Coming up on the time here, so... Stopping this video off shortly. But yeah, if anyone knows why that tube is not opening. Or maybe if even Drew's watching this, which I don't know why you would be. But if you are, why is that tube not opening? That tube is being my arch enemy right now. Of course, I'll have this whole thing recorded by the time anybody sees it, but. Well, I'd still like to know what causes that tube not to open. Door? Did you not see my beam? Or feel it? Anyway, I think I'll go ahead and end the video off here, so thanks for watching. The next video, we are going to dive into Norfair. Not worry about that tube for now. But we'll dive into Norfair, start collecting some stuff, and preparing for Lower Norfair. So we will see you for that one.